So I forgot all my things for one of my shifts. Wild week. Work has been literally charting and wiping ass, man. Cheers to that. Cheers to wiping ass, man. Cheers. Very busy, chaotic, and hectic week. I'm sure Matt can agree. We're about to start our first week as nurses here in California. I just got off orientation. At least I got off orientation. Matt didn't get an orientation. So we'll just see how it goes. It's supposed to be a busy time of the year. It's an ICU. It's always busy. Flu season, COVID, as you can tell. And keep in mind that we have only had one day off to ourselves. So I'm looking forward to being working three, being off for six. And guess what? Who knows what's going to happen on these six days off? We're going to party hardy. Party hardy, go hiking. Who knows, guys? Stay tuned for that. Peter's serious face right here because he's about to do some two days in a row. Every yeah, so orientation's been stressful. I mean, this week's probably a little stressful. It's always a little stressful in the beginning, but I'm ready to work. Actually, like work is stressful in general. Yeah, but no, nursing is. Like, yeah. let's face it. But I feel like going to work and, and ha being forced to work from like 7 p.m. 7 a.m. puts you on, like a schedule, and it kind of, for the most part, been helping me adjust. For the most part, because when we were first moving here. Like we didn't have really a structured schedule. We just yeah, kind of there all was no like, structures all over the place. Yeah, yeah, we were just doing whatever, whenever, all that kind of shit. But now, like, I feel like I'm back to being being normal almost. So right. That helped be a little it's accommodating for my uh, like jet lag or whatever you call it. See, I don't know if I want to call it normal for me because I've been off for three months. If anything, I am more motivated to work harder on everything that we're doing in order to not be a full time nurse. Because even though I love nursing, like let's face it, there's so many nurses that say, "Hey, I'm gonna go." back to school I'm gonna advance my career like it's a hard freaking job man Let, like let's be honest especially in the ICU so yeah and me being off for like well like a week now you could say two weeks I feel very refreshed too so I'm not as burnt out because you know even though you don't pick up overtime just do your three nights or three days you still get burnt out like every probably like every few months because Hell yeah. because actually maybe even less if you have a stressful three days you're burnt out after those three days like the rest of that week is probably gonna be not as enjoyable as it would if, if you didn't have these heavy set patients. So I do feel refreshed too, because there is times in nursing where you're like, I probably should do this, but you know, I'm super tired. I'm kind of, yeah. I'm gonna delay it for a little, little bit later. Now I'm kind of gonna be more, more on my game and being more 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 prone to doing things right off the bat instead of kind of uh, progressing, you can Progressing, say. yeah. And you know, speaking of like, to wrap up that topic of nursing and how rough it is, like there was a nurse that I talked to, she's 30 years old and she got an MRI done and then like the, the guy said that, or doctor, whoever, is like that she has micro tears all over her back. Like it's it's wild. Like that nursing does this to you. And she's only 30, man. So lift properly with good lifting technique. And that also includes the gym. The gym, yeah. But what is that? What is that technique called? Bend at the knees, please. So what do you think is gonna be like the hardest thing for your first week? Hardest thing for my first week what is just be, getting yeah. back to the motion, getting back to figuring out the charting system, like if someone told me to hang blood, I'd be freaking out a lot right now because I don't know, do you need a piece of paper? Do you call blood bank? Like those little processes, things, right? That's why I say, hey, brush up on the policies and procedures sometimes. And other than that, like floating, man, if you float somewhere and just figuring things out, just like you, man, it's a new unit, but it's kind of part of the fun. It's like a little rush. Yeah, same for me. I'd probably say definitely the policy procedures, like you said, the blood. I could hang blood, I could give blood. I could, you know, take a look at, is a patient having a reaction, but, I'm not sure, like you said, do they do what's my paper? The, what's the proper way of charting it? Exactly, probably charting it and how do they want they want it done? Like, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can increase the blood for the most part based on how the patient is looking. Like, you don't want to increase it too fast if they have heart failure, but if, you know, if they're like depleted, it's not a really big deal of, of how fast you give it.
We are off for another day another in night. the paradise. You got, you got shoes in the in the in your backpack. Mm -hmm. Peter likes to wear flip flops to work, and then puts on flip flops. It makes it bond the patient. I just a put better. my shit on. What's up? It makes it bond the patient a little, little better. He's more homey. I see. You know. About to go change. These are the concentration camps. Ready? All right, I'm here for my 15. Almost done with my food actually, but I was at actually a break nurse for a little bit. I'm sorry, I was actually a runner, meaning I'm helping the ICU for the COVID side. Now I'm actually taking a COVID patient. So I got the cap on and um, it's a little bit different, but it's cool because every day is a different experience. So you're never bored at work. Like it's always different and I love it for that reason. So I'm about to have some food here and I'm about to get back to work. 15 minutes, work a couple hours, one hour lunch, go home, rinse and repeat. Chicken back in, I have a one hour lunch now. It's about 3.10 a.m. And I'm actually waiting for Peter to go on his lunch. We actually got lucky and we have them both at 3 a.m. So we're gonna go downstairs to the basement because we've been working three in a row. We haven't been working out or haven't been going to the gym. So we're gonna do some pull-ups downstairs in the basement. I've worked here before, so I have a secret spot. All right, so now I'm walking. Me and Peter on lunch. Yes, we are. We're about to go do some pull-ups because we haven't been to the gym, just like I said, in a couple days. Yeah, because our chiropractor said we gotta work on our poster complex. So we're gonna work on our poster complex. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Sorry, guys. There's a pull-up bar. Doesn't get the balls drop Right. This is where we're gonna work out. Uh, put him in the dirt. Say it again, man, and that's a reverse. Uh, uh, never yeah. rehearse. Jump in it first. Call up the nurse, put the beat in the hearse. Uh, uh, this is absurd. Take the berserk. Don't get on the tracks, man, and they better swerve. Don't got a nerve, man. I never curse. Just casting these spells when I'm spelling these words. That's real. That's real. That's too that's real. Too real. I've been most of all, I need a new deal. Trying to figure out what I should do still. So we are here resting our, our eyes. One hour break means we can nap for at least 50 minutes of those 60 minutes. But no complaints today, smooth shift. Make sure nobody's walking up on me. But smooth shift so far, it's about what? 3.45, we got like 20 minutes left on my break. Take a quick nap. Then get back in it. No complaints so far, everyone's stable. Two ninety year old patients, so you know how that goes. Just Post like work. Like prove it. Typical PD has a lot of energy, he's talking shit. I'm saying that I could get a blood draw with a butterfly with my eyes closed. I had a hard time getting a draw some blood today. I had tried six times. PD thinks he could have got it. My blood draw senses are so good, my eyes are closed and I could feel the flash. I could feel the flash. And I could feel everything. To be my determined, eyes. next time I have a patient that's a hard stick. I'm gonna call him over because for the most part we have the same working shift, so that will be determined. I'll get back to you guys. But we're out of here. We're about to go home. Uh, I might skip the gym. I might go for a run. Did some pull-ups last oh, night. Pull -ups. During the night, we should say during yeah. this day. So yeah, we'll talk during the drive. Be brief. All right, we're driving home from our shift. I would say that it wasn't too bad. I am not complaining whatsoever. These are like not your champion. The best shift I've had so far. It was like a nursing home kind of patients. All people were 90 years old. So we know how about that comes. You don't want to treat anything too aggressively. But we had, or I had a patient that basically came from Dreamia. So nothing really crazy happening, which is, you know, kind of waiting for her to normalize. But we did give her two boluses of 500 mLs of D5 just because her sodium was increasing too quickly. And you know, if your sodium goes up too quickly, higher risk of seizures, things like that. So we added the D5, nice slow bolus of 250 an hour, uh, just so the sodium kind of slowly increases, doesn't go up too fast. Are you still with D5? Yeah. Interesting, okay. I, I know that's a thing, but I guess it's a thing. Yeah, See, so you, lear you learn every single day. And, and for me, I just had a patient that came from a nursing home COVID positive, didn't even get intimate or anything like that. So to be honest, my 
my night, I had one patient, didn't get an admit. Super smooth. I had time for myself. Not really, but I was helping out. In the hospital, even though, like, you're not busy, you're, you tend to become busy because you help other people, you know what I mean? So, like, regardless, you on your shift, you, be, you become productive, you know? But it's like that mental standpoint, you know what I mean? You don't feel, like, fatigued, like, mentally, like, damn, what a freaking shift, you know? Yeah. I just realized that I hit my head yesterday, and I have a bruise, and I probably was bleeding. What'd you do? Look. I'm not gonna look at it right now. I'm driving the car. He's driving. Well, I'm pretty sure I have a bruise. I hit it at the corner, uh, corner table, corner uh, stand. Yeah, like at home? No, at work. At work. And it hurt so bad, but I had to suck it up because I'm a ain't raised no. That's what I'm saying. I'm not raised no. <laughs> My other patient, um, while we're still debriefing, is you're now put drop, so we just give him 40 IV Lasix. Started avoiding. Fine. But of course, at the end of the shift, like 6.58, the little grandma that we gave the bonuses to decided to take out her IV, so I got blood in my mask, I hold her down, she kept screaming. But... She started alone or no? No, she had two. Oh, okay. Uh, so she probably got transferred out, so she didn't really need more than one. She's 90 years old, she's probably going to go home soon. Right, okay. She has stabilized that sodium, but she, I mean, it's up to, I think it was at 124 when I left, so got up from 113. So we're on day number three. I'm a little bit nervous about day number three because I don't usually work out in between my shifts. So I, I actually got four and a half hours of sleep. So I will debrief this morning to let you know how exactly I feel after not sleeping enough. Peter's been doing it. Look at him. Young gentleman, oh, healthy and buff. Yo! Now last shift and then we're off for like a week. Seven ah. days. I can't even count on my fingers how many days that is. I'm you so can. pumped. This much. Six. Jets in the car, man. All right, it's another day in paradise, and we are on off on our way to the third shift of the week. We are about eight minutes behind schedule. Eight minutes behind schedule, running a little bit late. So we're in the carpool lane, which means I'm going at least eighty. Yeah, carpool lane is nice in Cali. If you have more than two passengers, you get to ride quicker. Uh, no coffee today, and one thing that is different for me is the whole you know five hours of sleep. Recovery is damn good though. HRV is popping up. Probably a question a lot of people wanted to know is why do we work out so damn much? Why? Because one, we are very health conscious. Two, it's like a snack by the most part of one. And three, it's like doing it. Yep. And it just keeps us healthy to be honest. And it harnesses our energy where we're I feel like more focused. Like if I don't get a workout in for a couple days, I don't feel not like myself, but I just feel like very out of it. Like it takes me out of my head into my damn body. That feels good. I sleep better too. Like in the morning, like you know how, how I have energy in the morning. Like it's kind of hard to sleep like that. I can still like sleep, but like good workout in. You already feel like you accomplished something that day. Like, you already met one goal. Yeah, it puts you to sleep. So those that are wondering why I work out every vlog, it's because why, man? We out here gains. Right. Show me a flex. There you go. That's good enough. Slow down there. <laughs> it's enough, nobody. I was like, Peter, did you like to make sure you have your backpack? I'm like, no, nah, it's for sure my car. I remember taking it out. And I took it out. Guess what happened? I Peter, forgot Peter, all for my shit. Peter forgot all his gear. He doesn't even have shoes on. So he's going to put on floaties, these little shoe covers, the sandals. And he's going to do his nursing shift. So it should be interesting. No ID, no pen, no stethoscope. Poor kid. So I'll give Peter the GoPro tonight and I'll let him take you guys on a little journey of not being prepared for your shift at work. A walking embarrassment right now. Yeah. It's a walking embarrassment for sure. There is so far this has probably been one of, if not, the most frustrating shifts of my life. First of all, I came into work without anything. Forgot my backpack at home. I swear I thought I packed that thing, but I didn't. So to begin with, it was bad. Did I have my shoes? Did I have my telescope? No ID badge, no pen, no pen light, no Sharpies, nothing, nothing. I have absolutely nothing. I came bare naked to work. I literally had to put on those little foot, those booties or those, or those footies for your shoes because I came in with these Adidas flip flops. I came into work with Adidas flip flops. Check it out. Take this. this. I was rocking around with these flip flops, with these booties, because I'm not about to tell people that I forgot the shoes. But, but that's not the, it's not even the worst part. Cause listen, 
I came on shift. I had both my patients back and his grandma started wilding out. I had to give her four, four pushes of Ativan. Gave her some Haldol. Long story short, she calmed down, but the fact that I had no ID badge, not prepared for any of this, made it so much worse. I had to keep asking people for their ID badge. I had to keep asking people to borrow a stethoscope. It just, whole night was a shambles. I came in already stressed out and this patient even stressed me out even more. So, lesson learned, double check that you have your backpack and your supplies because I had a rough ass, rough ass shift, especially the beginning. Highly do not recommend for getting your shit at home. All right, we just finished our third shift of the week. We're done for seven days. And I finished my shift with walking with these things all night. Yeah, Peter, how was it, man? Miserable. Miserable. I was, ever had I was miserable too, I'm not gonna lie. I had a freaking busy night. I was pushing hypertensive medication all night to lower the blood pressure. I cleaned up three times vomit, cleaned up two beds. I just, I've been working, like I've been running around. I had no time for myself. I feel like I worked. I'm over it. I worked a week in ICU and I'm burnt out already. I'm a burnt out nurse, I'm ready to retire. I'm not really burnt out, I just, Frustrated, dude. That's what it is. I'm actually not bad right now. I'm, I'm happy because we're out, of, we're out of work. But you know, when you have a grandma freaking out the whole shift, and you got a ID badge to pull out of van, and you gotta every time you pull it, you gotta have somebody come verify that you're gonna be pulling, you know, that amount the right away. That sucks. Yeah, that's dude. annoying. And that's my feet hurt because these things are. I'm. I appreciate proper shoes now. So I never had my feet hurt this bad in my whole nursing career. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Is correct, Matthew. Yeah, and then also my patient like decided to. Pulled her sheath, so uh, today pulled huh? Yeah, so I did this stuff you did you? Yeah, so today I was that nurse where, you know, during the report the nurse is like, "Oh, was that there already?" And I'm looking down and the sheath is pulled like this much, and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, that just probably happened because she's been moving around." So that sucks that I was that nurse during the report. Like, yeah, it's alright. Yeah, but I'm I'm over it. I'm ready to go home, sleep, and eat. Go to bed. Good night. We just finished our first week of working as nurses in the great state of California. Travel nursing has been amazing so far. We did our three in a row. Well, technically Matt did three in a row. I did three shifts with one in between. But now we have a nice stretch of days off, about six to seven nights off. Gonna have some fun. What's going on? But we also have work number two, and this is what we do outside of nursing. We have a podcast. For those that are not tuned in, highly recommend it. We have some fun. And this is Behind the Scenes, how the show goes. You guys ready? busy it's i can't believe it. i went from taking patients admitting floating being a break nurse being a runner for the icu float going to overflow it's been crazy and like the patients i had these past couple days shifts even it's been just heavy and it's not critical it's just more labor intensive wiping butts charting cleaning up vomit it's just been uh it's been crazy how about you yeah you mentioned heavy we had that really big guy come in that's right through the er like was it 700 pounds well, it's interesting because I got to see a uh, bedside cannulation. That was pretty cool. I had to put him on an ECMO. But besides that, I've been basically chasing up and patients, you know, because high risk for, for stroke, you got to ease them, ease them back up to like their, their homeostasis level. But one thing that happened to me was very embarrassing. Shit happens, traumatized completely. I forgot all my stuff at home, my backpack with all my nursing stuff, stethoscope, shoes, ID badge. So I literally wore my flip flops or what they call flip flops. Well, did us, did us sandals basically with those booties because I was too embarrassed to, you know, to say, hey, I forgot my shoes. But long story short, took care of business. Nobody knows. And if you guys are watching that one shift, you know, with the crazy grandma, yeah, I was not wearing my proper shoes. You live and you learn sometimes. That's what's crazy about nursing, that it's just never the same. Shit happens. I've literally had patients where I thought it's gonna be a good shift. Turns for the worse. There's always things happening. Like one guy was like literally like, he was confused. He was trying to pull like his Foley catheter off and like instead of like peeing into the catheter, he yanked it out and then he just peed all over the, peed all over himself like three times. On top of that, back to back, I had a lady that kept vomiting it to clean her up and it's like, 
it's just demoralizing sometimes. You're there for 12 hours and this is what you're experiencing, just like torture upon yourself. And it's like, damn, when is the shift gonna be over sometimes you think, you know? Yeah, it's rough, especially when you not have a lot of hands out of work where you're not titrating as much, it's more like putting people up or- it's physical, man. Yeah, trying to calm down grandmas. But it's cool, because we had a patient come, it wasn't my patient, it was just on the unit with a AAA, so a urine dissection, same person that we had in Canada. But it was, it was very interesting to see they came in and how they looked, and then they literally turned purple. They became more modeled, and you, you literally saw the patient decline. We couldn't get her, her blood pressure up, and the surgeons and the OR team actually came in, bedside, came to her, and we got her, or you know, the nurse got her stabilized for the most part. I was there, just chilling for most I don't know, I don't know how to do things. They don't shoot their numbers, which is interesting, because like, for me, when I was taught on, my, on our swans back in Chicago, we shot numbers manually. Here, we hook up to like the Cheeto or whatever they call yeah, it, it's okay. continuous. They don't shoot any kind of numbers. Even their A-line setup is different, like they have a different way to, to, to pull the blood of the 10 cc's of blood that you waste. It's very interesting to see it. and I got a good visual of how they do things on the unit, so it's very informative. As you can tell, like nursing is crazy, it's never the same. And after working three nights, packing, relocating, this is our time finally to be off. So I'm like looking forward to having the se seven days off. I'm like ecstatic. Even though we're sleep deprived today, the way we transition into uh, being a normal human and working day shift is we sleep two to three hours, go to sleep, take a nap, wake up, do some things around the house, go to sleep again at 10 o'clock. It's like 11 a.m. right or p.m. right now because you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do some work, right? Second job. But life is good and we're excited to get you guys on this whole journey of what's going to happen. So yeah, the hardest thing on night shift is probably the transition back to normal life. Yeah. Because you gotta be able to function on day shift schedule once you're out of work. You know, the you know, the extra pay is nice, but you know, it really messes with you. And I don't think it's very stable for long term, but you know, we're doing it. I feel like we, we do it right. And I feel like we kinda of hacked it for the most part. Nursing is a tough job. Mm -hmm. Be prepared if you're looking forward to being a nurse or working as one. And if you like this vlog, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.